Mohr's circle is based on the three stress transformation equations, which allow you to figure out the stress on a differential element that's rotated at any value of theta. To implement these equations, we need to know values of sigma x, sigma y, and the shear stress, tau xy, when the differential element is not rotated from the original coordinate axis. And you get these values from the original loading from the problem statement. And let's do an example where we know that sigma x is equal to negative 8, could be megapascal or psi, or other equivalent units of stress. And I'm using negative 8 to represent the fact that it's under compression in the horizontal axis. And let's assume that sigma y for this particular problem is equal to 3, and a positive value means it's under tension in that direction. And let's use a shear stress of 15. With knowledge of the initial state of stress for the unrotated element, let's make a graph of these three stresses as a function of theta. To do that, I first calculated values of the transformed stresses as a function of theta, and I've got a total of 13 different data points. So I've got theta running in 15 degree increments. One thing to note is that the transformed stresses are identical when we rotate through 180 degrees. So theta equals 0, I've got tau xy is uh, equal to 15, I've got sigma y is equal to 3, and sigma x is equal to negative 8 at theta equals 0. Here are the rest of my data points for tau xy, and if I draw a smooth curve through these, I get a sinusoid for tau xy, and we'll see the same thing for sigma x and sigma y. What these values and graphs mean is for example, if we rotate the differential element counterclockwise by 30 degrees, the transformed stresses will be 7.7, negative 12.7, and 12.3. This is what the differential element would look like if we rotated it counterclockwise by 30 degrees. Another way to represent these equations is by using Mohr's circle. And Mohr's circle conveys the exact same information, but the graph just looks different. Some people find this interpretation of the stress transformation equations to be more intuitive. So to make more circle, let's plot on the x-axis sigma x prime and on the vertical axis tau x prime y prime. And all that means is we plot this column on the horizontal axis and this column on the vertical axis. So here's our first point. It's plotted coordinates of negative 8 and 15. Here's our second point. It's 0 0.2 and 15.7. And here I've graphed all 13 points. You'll only see 12 points because point 1 and point 13 give the same value. And when I graph these, we're, we are left with something that looks like a circle. In fact, if I graph the equations themselves, we would end up with a circle. And the circle is known as Mohr's circle. One thing to note is that for every value of tau x prime y prime, there's a corresponding negative value that's the same. And if we look at these and compare sigma x prime and sigma y prime, we'll find that they're identical values and they're just swapped. I could do the same thing for all my values of tau. We'll just see that the values of sigma x prime and y prime are swapped. And as it turns out, if I take the average of these values for each row here, we'll get the same value. And we'll call that value sigma average, which is equal to 1 half sigma x plus sigma y, simply the average of the two values. Because of this, and because more of a circle, and because the data points are a circle, I can take and cut my circle any way I want to, and what we'll find is that at the center, all of these data points will cross at the same point. And it turns out that that point is equal to sigma average. We can compute sigma average as just being one half, in this case, negative 8 plus 3. That gives us an average value of negative 2.5. You could try it if you like, but you'll find negative 2.5 would be the sigma average for all of these 13 points. So I'll just draw a dashed line coming down for sigma average, and that's equal to negative 2.5 to the left. So these data points, if I graph them, they result in a circle. I'll just start at the center point and draw a, a circle outward. A useful geometric property with more circles is if we start with the first data point and draw an angle between the first data point and the second data point, it turns out this angle is, for this problem, is equal to 30 degrees, or a value of 2 times theta. My second point was a value of 15 degrees. If I want to, I can rotate it. This, this angle here will be, again, 2 times theta, or in this case would be 60 degrees. This third data point, will be 2 times theta, in this case is equal to 90 degrees, where I'm using these values right here. Note that the angles I've drawn on Moore's circle are clockwise angles. We're going from the original point clockwise 30 degrees, from the original point clockwise 60 degrees, and the original point clockwise to 90 degrees, and so on if you go around the circle. However, the convention that we use is, is a positive value of theta. Here's theta equals to 30 degrees. It represents a counterclockwise rotation. 
So if we graph more circle, clockwise rotation on more circle is equated to a counterclockwise rotation of the differential element. So instead of plotting positive values of the transformed shear stress in the upward direction, uh, you'll often see these values tau x prime y prime in the positive direction being downward. If I do that, my circle becomes a mirror image about the horizontal axis. So this first data point, negative 8 and 15, now appears as negative 8 and 15 in the downward direction. So this point moves, it's mirrored across the horizontal axis. And if I zoom in on that, 2 theta is equal to 30 degrees for the first point. And this second point is 60 degrees, the third point is 90 degrees, etc. So what this shows is that a counterclockwise rotation about Mohr circle, if the positive value of tau x prime y prime is downward, it means we're rotating our differential element in the same direction. So let's look at an animated simulation of these equations. Here I'm graphing the stresses in arbitrary units with theta running from 0 to 180 degrees and I've got sigma x of negative 8, sigma y of 3, and tau xy equal to 15. I've graphed more circle using a positive value of tau in the downward direction. Negative value is up and positive sigma to the right, negative sigma to the, to the left. And to draw more circle it really is as simple as plotting this first data point which is sigma average uh, on the horizontal axis for this problem sigma average is equal to negative 2.5 and I draw a second point which is simply tau xy or equal to 15 in this problem and sigma x which is equal to negative 8. So once I've got the center point and this other point you just use if you're doing it on paper you just use a compass to draw a circle coming out from those points. If I want to draw a new state of stress at 30 degrees what I'll draw is another point with an angle of 2 theta or 60 degrees counterclockwise from there. So here I'll just choose this value of 30 degrees and I'm rotating my differential element uh, 30 degrees counterclockwise. On Mohr circle I've got a value this angle here is 2 theta or 60 degrees and this is my counterclockwise rotation of 30 degrees. Mohr circle is uh, useful in part because it allows me to find the principal stresses. Here I'm rotating to sigma 1 in which the shear stress is equal to zero and I've got values of sigma x and sigma y. So here's the state of stress. The first principal angle is theta equal 55 degrees and sigma 1 here is equal to 13.5 and sigma 2 is equal to negative 18.5. And if I want to continue to rotate it I can go find the other angle in which tau xy is equal to zero. I just add 90 degrees to it and I see the state of stress for the second principal stress.